Hi there. <clears throat> this video is about using online tools to help you develop um, productive vocabulary. <clears throat> Why do people want to do that? Why develop productive vocabulary? Well, writing essays and things like that in a second language um, sometimes requires quite specific meanings generated by specific vocabulary. Uh, finding the right word to help you express meanings you can express perfectly well in uh, a first language. But there are certain problems with uh, using a new word. Um, principally, we don't know when we learn words in isolation which other words it normally appears with. And we don't normally um, know just from looking at a word which topics, which locations we will find that word in. Um, so the company a word keeps, the words around it, are called collocations and these websites that we're going to look at today um, are basically ways of looking at what kinds of collocations, what company you normally see the word in. Um, so you can just basically look at them and identify if that's a meaning that you want to make. So we're going to look at two tools um, to answer these two questions. Uh, what company does a word keep and where do they tend to go together? What topics, what subject areas, uh, semantic fields, fields of meaning making do they appear in? Uh, that second question is not answered as well actually but by the, the technology. But anyway, it gives us a start. Okay, so here's a vocabulary exercise. Um, so in the table here, you have a question. Um, comparing food in London and food back home what do you notice? And uh, the idea here is that you're given um, a word family uh, around the word compare and all of the words related to compare by um, changing the root with prefixes and suffixes and inflections, things like that, are, are listed. Um, compare, comparability, comparable, comparably. The idea here is, um, I think, to show the student all the word forms related and then um, by reading them and thinking about them and using them it, it could increase vocabulary in the area of the word compare. But if we take one of these words, let's say for example comparison, um, we don't necessarily automatically know which other words um, appear with comparison. I mean if I want to write a sentence and answer this question, what, what other words might I need to know? Okay, so the first website we're going to look at um, is this one. Um, this is uh, part of Mark Davis's excellent website hosted at the Brigham Young University. Um, basically, they're ways of finding um, data and information from a huge database of language. This one, the iWeb corpus, is a 14 billion word corpus. It's, it's a lot of all a massive survey of language on the internet. To use this website um, regularly, you'd need to log in and register as I have. Um, the first time you open it, it'll be on the list um, function, but what we're looking for is a word, detailed information about one word. And remember, we're looking for the word comparison. So let's see what um, we find if we um, check the word comparison. We ask for detailed info. So that's the word we're looking for, comparison. Um, there's some discussion on what the word means. Um, obviously you can use any dictionary to, to find that out. Um, in terms of um, what company does a word keep, uh, here are many collocations with the word comparison. In terms of where do they go, um, what topics do they appear with, um, there's some suggestions on topics here. Obviously, it's used to make comparisons, analysis, to describe difference. And that's essentially what we're doing in our question. If you remember, um, we're thinking about difference between food in London and food back home, wherever that is for you. So we're reasonably ha I'm reasonably happy that this word fits uh, this topic. Um, so there are some nouns that the word comparison appears with. Um, price comparison, comparison table. It, this one doesn't tell you whether they're 
collocations before or after the word. Um, but down here you get um, a lot more information on that. Comparison chart, comparison tool, comparison table, price comparison, size comparison. There's some adjectives here, and I quite like meaningful comparison. Meaningful comparison is sort of straight away a little bit critical, analytical. Um, the idea that not all comparisons are meaningful is sort of inside this. If you put those two words together, we automatically start thinking in those categories. Um, so I'm going to take a meaningful comparison for my answer. I quite like that. And let's have it. Meaningful comparison. Okay, so I've got um, adjective, noun, collocation. They're quite nice. But I'm not really sure which verbs go with it. So um, facilitate comparison, draw comparison. If I wasn't sure, I could look at more um, information on that. But draw a comparison, um, I know, is a is a frequent um, is a frequent collocation in English. So I'm going to put that in there, and I'm going to draw a meaningful comparison. So that's a block of language, which is conventional and accurate. Uh, and I can use. I mean, it doesn't answer the whole question for me. Okay, so I'm going to add a bit more here, um, in order to draw a meaningful comparison. Um, it is important to eat in people's homes. <clears throat> so again, sort of a slightly critical response to the question. Um, how do you know what foods are like if all you've done is really ever eaten in um, McDonald's or Starbucks or whatever? I mean, UK food, food in London, uh, at least to a certain extent will be eaten in people's homes. Okay, so let's go on to the, the second question. Um, does cooking well require a big effort, in your opinion? So the word family around effort, which is much smaller, is being, um, students are being exposed to that. Effort, effortless, effortlessly, efforts. So I think, oh, well, I don't really use this word very much, effortless. So let's see what we can learn about the word. Again, put that in the, the search bar, it's on the word. Um, the word tool is selected. See detailed info for the word. Um, we learn that effortless is an adjective, requiring no effort, not showing effort, meaning is reasonably familiar. Interestingly, the uh, information on topics, um, I mean, this is something we could think about a lot, but they're largely to do with fashion here. There's no indication from these topics that um, effortless is a word that could be used with food, but actually it is. So we need to treat this with some caution. It's just that effortless is dominant, it appears dominant, predominantly in websites about fashion. Effortless appearance, effortless style, and so on. <clears throat> okay, so let's remind ourselves of the question. Um, we're wondering if cooking well requires a big effort uh, or not. So let's have a look at the, what they're calling the clusters here. Um, the dot to the right means um, these words follow effortless to the right. Effortless style, effortless way, effortless look. The dot to the left means these words come before effortless. For effortless, with effortless, so effortless, almost effortless. Two dots is two words to the right. I suppose that's part of as effortless as possible, effortless to use effortless access to. Um, let's come down to um, this one because um, these potentially are more useful for food. Effortless way to add, add flavour, add style to your food, effortless way to get, nutrition maybe, effortless way to make. That's definitely a chunk that we can use in our answer so let's let's take that effortless way to make. Okay, so again, it's not going to answer the whole question for us, but at least now we can think about an answer to this question. Um, 
you know, does cooking well require effort? Well, we could say um, there are effortless, let's say more than one ways to make food such as microwaving, but the result is not always great. And we've got our word effortless there in a, in a chunk of language that we know um, is used on the internet, we know is used <coughs> quite widely, so hopefully and probably it is accurate. <coughs> so um, let's look at one more um, website now. Um, so <coughs> Skell is a uh, is a part of the Sketch Engine family, and some of it's a uh, premium service you pay for, but there are free parts to it as well. It does a similar thing to, to the iWeb corpus, but it, it lays it out a bit differently. <coughs> um, okay, so let's come down to the next question. Um, again, this, this is another question about food. Do you read websites to check if a restaurant has favourable reviews, or do you just go in? So here's the... Um, word family, favour, favourable, favourably, favoured, and so on. Um, and we're going to stick our neck out and use the adverb here, favourably. <coughs> um, so if we put this word into um, scale, scale will give us some information about the word. Um, it defaults to this tool, which is um, giving you examples of the word um, in, again, language that has really appeared. Uh, again, this language is largely from the internet, Wikipedia, but also scientific papers, professional writing. There's a billion words of uh, English published and edited to a greater or lesser extent, um, which this draws is drawn from. Um, we can see the kind of words appearing around favorably. Favorably is modifying a verb, obviously. Favorably evaluated, favorably reviewed, received favorably. Um, favorably received, so we can start to see receive and favorably together. There's another one here, favorably received. Um, here's favorably impressed. And there's another favorably impressed down here. So we, we could just notice patterns just by looking at these examples and probably different learners will have different feelings about that, but I, I think it's quite effective. Um, if you click on word sketch, it will tell you in summary, in fact, um, um, which which verbs normally occur with favourably. So we've got favourably compare, favourably review, favourably comment, favourably contrast. And many of these will be valid for our question, which, if you remember, is about whether we um, go to restaurants which have had favourable reviews or not. Um, Comment is something which can work for us in that regard. Comment favourably. So let's think about reviewers and we'll say if reviewers, restaurant reviewers, um, we need to change the tense of this verb, have commented favourably on a restaurant, I am more likely to go there. I've actually said something that isn't true in my life because I don't read restaurant reviews, but anyway, it's um, language that we've taken from scale and it's um, something that we've worked into our own answer. Um, We've used the word family given, and it, it's a word appearing uh, with company that it does normally keep in the English language, um, according to that body of language. <coughs> so um, we could go on, but um, we've had a, a look at those two websites, and just to remind you, the point of those showing, the point of showing these two websites, is to show that the process of finding real collocations with new words can be helped with technology. It won't do all the work for you, but it will help 
you start to make blocks of language, chunks of language, which can then be put into your own sort of pattern of expressing what you want to say. Um, and it could uh, prevent you from making errors that you, you might make from sort of imagining what company the word keeps by imagining what it's like in your first language and that kind of thing. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Good luck exploring that.